towards the right. right. Absolutely. So as you move to the right, just see if vision increases? Is that what you're trying to show? It's it's I'm trying to show two things. Shielding will decrease okay. as you go to the right. Mm -hmm. but It'll decrease, go this way. And you're right, Z effective, how many protons it can see, increases. Okay, and then... So, so far we've only doing two of them. This okay. is the hardest one to do. <laughs> Once you get these, the rest are easy. Alright, and the other question I had was, um, um, uh, what is defined as the core electrons? Is there like some, some orbital, or what is this? A core electron is anything that goes in the brackets in the electron configuration. Oh. So for carbon, it's helium, 2s2, 2p2. This is okay. core electrons, everything oh, here. Okay. So that's okay. like just going to be like a noble gas? The, the previous noble gas oh, includes all the core electrons. Mm -hmm. okay. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. So are you okay with this concept of Z-effective and shielding? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a quick question about the I and the EA. Uh -huh. the, the ionization, like right. how does that apply to this? We'll get there, oh. yeah. Okay. Yeah, this, we have to get the shielding and the effect of like the core ones, and then when you get that, you get the other ones. Okay, so next, R is the next easiest to understand. R, can you see if something is more shielded, cannot see protons, it is less attracted to the nucleus, and so it, it will have an expansion. So, for example, the, if these valence electrons do not see protons, they have less desire to be attracted towards the center. So it gets bigger. As things are shielded, they get bigger. More and more shielding means bigger and bigger. So, uh, that's why radius and shielding follow the same trend. They increase down and to the left. So, cesium is very big. It's the biggest. Uh, fluorine is very small. Fluorine's over here, cesium's down here. Then won't that contradict with the net charge? Because okay, never mind. So to say it again, the valence electrons, the less they can see the center. The only thing keeping an electron on an atom uh -huh. is the protons. Okay, it's kind of like you know, uh, if a gal likes guys. She wants to meet them, she will go where the guys are. She'll join the football team or whatever. You know what I mean? That kind of concept. So it's going to go to where it's going to find what it wants. The electrons want protons. If the electrons cannot see the protons, they're less attracted to it. Okay, so that's why. More shielding, bigger. Okay, so big size goes that way. You say uh, fluorine is really small? Yeah. Right? Um, well, so, isn't, wouldn't, uh, for fluorine, wouldn't there be, like, wouldn't the electrons be able to see the nucleus? Because there's only two core electrons, right? And, like, I don't know, ten? Ten, um, valence electrons? So That's wouldn't for they, fluorine, yeah. For the fluorine, so the outside ones will be able to see the nucleus. You got it. So wouldn't it be smaller because it's more attractive? Exactly, that's right. This is the oh, smallest. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're exactly right. You're exactly right. So, okay. So that's R. I, this one, ionization energy, exactly the opposite. <laughs> so how this one works. As something gets bigger, uh, and it's less shielded, that means the electrons are way away. They don't see any protons. So it's easier to pull one off a.k.a. ionize it. Okay, so, again, you have this monster-sized atom. Here's, way down here in the middle, somewhere is a proton. You have this electron way out here. Well, the bigger and bigger it gets, the easier it is to pull that electron off, a.k.a. ionize. The opposite is true. As it gets smaller, it's harder and harder to ionize, because you have to remove an electron from some very awesome protons that it can see. So going this direction, ionization energy increases positively. It's a positive number because you put energy in to remove an electron. Okay? That one okay? Can you give an example of the really big, um, the really big 
big atom? Like which element would be really big? Cesium's huge. Cesium? Like, yeah. Which one is that? It's in the sixth row, uh huh, of the alkali oh. metal. So if you draw that out, wouldn't you have fifty five valence electrons and like uh, Cesium has fifty five valence electrons, right? And, Neutral cesium. Okay. And um six core, right? Well, uh, not necessarily, uh, not exactly. Uh, its valence electrons would be from xenon, and it has 54 core, I should say core electrons from xenon. It has one valence electron. Uh, so you can see that one electron's pretty shielded. Does that make any sense? I mean, there's only one electron and 54 in the middle blocking it. Yeah. So that's why it gets really big, because that one electron just strays out way far away oh. and make, making the radius essentially very large. Okay. Is that okay? Okay. All right, where were we? Electron affinity? Um, yeah. Okay. I think this is the last one. Electron affinity is the concept of putting an electron in. Okay? Um... This gives off energy whenever you put in electrons. That's why there's a negative sign here. It follows ionization energy for the same reason. Putting an electron in, if, if it's bigger, there's a less net disturbance. Does that make sense? If it's bigger, you got tons of electrons there, lots of stuff going on. You put in one little tiny electron, you're not going to notice a difference. You got a little tiny thing, really, really tiny. You put in an electron, everybody's going to know it. And so that's going to take a lot more energy. In this case, energy given off. Okay. The last one, I guess I didn't say metallic character. This is more a function of the periodic table. Uh, the m more and more you go to the left and down, the more and more metallic something becomes. That means more malleable a better conductor, things like that. Uh, with the periodic table arranged this way, as you go up and to the right, it's just less so. So fluorine is not a good conductor, it's not malleable, etc. Okay, we're cool with the trends? Mm -hmm. that, so, um, yeah. uh, negative ions are actually of a lower energy state than, say, their neutral states? Like, for example, fluorine minus is of a lower energy than fluorine neutral? Ooh, that's a tough question to answer. Uh, I was just following the trend of electron affinity, and I figured that's like how it works. Yeah. It? When, uh, I'll say it this way. When uh, fluorine is in a molecule, it will usually be fluorine minus, because that is more stable. If it's just fluorine minus sitting out in random space, uh, it, it needs to be counterbalanced by a positive charge. So some sort of cation or some sort of positive charge somewhere. So yeah, that's not necessarily in itself stable. Fluorine 2 is really stable. F2 is the neutral version of fluorine that's stable. Yeah, so that's the uh, like most stable version of fluorine. If you had a fluorine minus flying around, it would be higher energy. But when fluorine forms a molecule, it's inside some molecule, whatever it is, it tends to be fluorine minus, because it will take electrons from the other atoms. And it's very good at taking electrons. It's so electronegative. Yeah. Is that okay? Okay. Cool.